when we look at these celebrities, what is one thing that we know that they share in common? Yes, we can think of their successes, but how, did they, how were they able to attain that success? What was their path like? In fact, they were able to share an underlying resilience as a way of reconceptualizing failure or obstacle to attain a long-term goal. We call this grit. Hello, my name is Joshua Heimrell, and I'll be presenting to you on a topic that I've been so passionate about for so long. But first, let's think positivity. Now, this is something that we're all familiar with. We can think of it as a smile, a song, laughter. We don't just see positivity through body language, but we can see it through effort as well. People all around us are inspiring, partially because of their positive mental attitude towards any given situation. But sometimes, too much effort into anything can lead to disappointment, especially if it doesn't reach our standards. Sometimes, we are faced with the fact that not enough effort put into something can make us understand why we weren't able to attain success. But both of these examples relate to something that we as individuals face with far too often, and that's failure. We're scared by this because we don't like to just disappoint ourselves, but the others all around us as well. In fact, we can receive an F on a test and create this negative fixed mindset for ourselves that we just can't do it a fixed mindset that has failures cemented in and can have children or adults afraid to try new things because they feel dumb. This fixed mindset can lead to a paralyzing fear of failure. Yet, all hope is not lost. What if there was a way where we can adapt from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset? Recent research by Angela Duckworth suggests that just by simply showing an image of a maturing brain can change the outlook of an elementary school children's perception on failure. As a child saw a maturing brain, they became more understanding that failure is okay. And in fact, they even tried harder and were more, more motivated towards the next test. It's this persistence that refers to as grit. And that makes us unique because we can stare at disappointment and be the bigger person by creating long-term goals for ourselves and push ourselves along life's beautiful journey. So what is grit? We can think of the Olympics and pro sports, and we can learn from an athlete's dedication on how they were able to use their long-term goals to attain success. Yes, this handsome devil on the screen here is me curling. No, not with the dumbbells, but sweeping, sliding on ice, etc. But in all seriousness, we can look at another example as well. Jobs. You can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be an astronaut. How are these people able to separate themselves from their peers to attain a long-term goal and enter into their dream job or be a pro athlete? One way we can look at this is through somebody's effort. The scientific study of grit and perseverance in the face of obstacles started with a group of individuals who underwent an intense and arguably tough boot camp, West Point cadets. Of the 1,200 participants, 62 dropped out of the BEAST program. Regardless of preliminary physical skill level, intelligence, or socioeconomic status, the only measure that predicted whether a cadet would stay or drop out was grit. In this case, they asked people how they prioritized their long-term goals and how they were able to face adversity. It's this effort and perseverance that is seen in West Point cadets that prevents them from dropping out, not skill or talent. Grit is a concept of perseverance and using your passion to attain a long-term goal. It could take days, it could take months, and it could take years to attain. But grit is what helps push you forward towards attaining that goal, or towards attaining that success that you've worked so hard to achieve. So for me, where did grit begin? We can look back at my middle school years when I first started running track and field. In seventh grade, I signed up for the mile and the 800 meter race. And I can tell you firsthand that success was nowhere near attainable for me. In fact, I finished in the bottom three of every single race that year. And by the end of the season, I really struggled to face failure and disappointment because of the embarrassment I felt. But I loved to run. I loved the feeling after I worked out. So I didn't want to finish last ever again, so I asked my stepfather if he could train me. And I'm blessed to say that he did. He trained me. But the ne next day I get home from school, there, I see him holding nothing but a bag of Lay's potato chips, asking me if I was ready to begin. Now, this sounds unique, it sounds interesting, 
but yet it also sounds delicious. The significance of running with potato chips is that as I ran with a chip in between my middle finger and my thumb, I was able to stay loose as a runner. If I broke a chip during a workout, it means I might have to restart the workout, or I ran too tight. But I also ran with a weighted vest sometimes to help with my endurance. I also wrote on a piece of paper that I hung to my bedroom door telling me what I needed to do to succeed. Eventually, my eighth grade year, I went undefeated in the mile and just about undefeated in the 800 meter run. The sub goals I just, just listed th that I just mentioned is based off of a hierarchy generated by psychologist Angela Duckworth. As you can see, we have our low level goals, our mid level goals, and our top level goal, which is our ultimate goal. This is great to look at because we can create multiples of these throughout our life based off of our specific interest. And you can use your lower level goals as daily or weekly challenges to eventually reach to that mid-level goal. When we believe that we have our goals set and we want to start following them, all of a sudden an, an obstacle gets in our way. Well, shoot, I had all these daily challenges I was ready to face and I knew what path to take. But with this obstacle in the way, I don't know how to get to that next path. I feel like I failed. Well, it's frustrating and I guarantee you it's happened to all of us. But life is too beautiful to let obstacles get in our way. We can move on by creating a new sub-goal, branching off of our original X-Off goal. Um, if you always believe there's a way, it can happen. Take, for instance, one of the key original characters I showed you at the beginning of the lecture, Michael Jordan. If we use this hierarchy of goal structure from GRIT, we can find that he needed to have cognitive flexibility to be able to find alternative routes when faced with an obstacle, such as being kicked off the high school basketball team. Grit is a concept entailed of four critical components of an individual, from which all of which we can see as e from evidence that it's beneficial for our long-term academic school success, which is my interest for when I move on to graduate school. We have interest, practice, purpose, and hope. With interest, we tend to engage in greater amounts of effort. You see this through most studies of intrinsic motivation. For instance, as you see a student persist and have this intrinsic motivation, they tend to want to strive towards achieving success on a test or an assignment. But it's not just about interest, it's also about practice. Our daily academic careers is based off of repeated practice, and being able to encode information into our memory. We can use this encoded information to apply it to everyday situations. Purpose. This is by far my most favorite word ever. You can feel the energy and the emotion every time you see it, or say it. The goods and bads that happen to us, every day has purpose. The goals we create for ourselves, and the obstacles that might come in our way, it all has purpose and nobody can take that away from us. And then there's hope, another powerful word. When life gets hard and school might seem impossible, just remember the dreams that we have are for ourselves and the knowledge that there's people around us that can help us. There's always a way to persist and get back up and keep trying. So is grit all good? I mean, it sounds great, but what does it actually lead to? Every day we are faced with obstacles, some smaller than others, and some we still might be trying to conquer today. As a society, we struggle to see anything but overachievement. We can conceptualize this as gritty individuals. We are able to see peers tend to become more successful than we are, even though we might be putting in more time and more effort than they are. How is that fair, right? I mean, we feel so stressed in that we try to make ourselves more distinct than the other person, that we take on more curricular activities and more work for ourselves, which in the long run relates to negative consequences such as loss of sleep. I mean, for crying out loud, I'm stressed just thinking about this. Sure, we are all building through these four pillars, but having all this grit that we are so focused on, we're, we just can't help but think of our long-term goals and that need for success which eventually has shown that it can decrease our levels of happiness and our overall, overall life satisfaction. Admittedly, 
One potential issue, no matter how gritty we are as individuals, there might be environmental constraints that would limit our goals. Should we as a society take a step back? Life satisfaction stems from accepting our limits, being happy with where life has taken us, and really sitting down to focus on how we can reach our appropriate long-term goals. One study investigated exactly this. The overview of the study states that you should face your self-compassion to prevent success as a negative effect on your life. You can be successful, but yet not be satisfied. How does that work? How is that possible? It's from stress overload that we put onto ourselves. It's okay to take that step back. You're not going to be disappointing anybody, and you should definitely feel like you don't disappoint yourself. Yes, there's opportunities that might come in our way, and you should take advantage of it. Learn from them, but understand the health of your body first. So where can we go from here? Grit is such a young concept in the realm of psychology. Like I said, it seems great, but it does have its drawbacks. I will suggest a few ways where we can take the concepts from grit and apply them to student success. Any first place to begin any intervention with grit is in our school systems. For me, I would never push for grit, but explain to people the importance of creating long-term goals for ourselves. As I stated in the beginning of the lecture, the first place we can start is by promoting more of a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. We can assign different assignments that could captivate a student's interest and activate their ability for the future. We can learn to limit praise. Yes, it's wonderful seeing a student succeed, but by telling them at a younger age how incredibly smart they are can help convince their minds that they don't need to try harder for a future, for a future challenge or for a future subject. And one last intervention that we could walk away from was mentioned from Stanford psychologist Carol Dweck. And I believe that if we can use her idea in an early education and junior high setting, that we can see students walk away more positive from seeing a lower score than feel so negative and have this fixed mindset for themselves. Rather than writing the letter F or D or just a low score on a test or assignment, why don't we write the letters N-Y-E-T, standing for not yet, a student might not be ready to understand the concept yet and feel that pressure from testing. So if we could keep practicing to encode their uh, ability for the future and, and that information, they'll be able to apply it easier for a future test, for a future assignment. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Be gritty.